Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Tunes. Uh, if you are here for the first time because of Allison, my name is Darren. I have been doing this every Tuesday, well, just about every Tuesday since May as just a way to perform every week and just keep you folks entertained and to make a little bit of tips on the side. But uh, in the last couple of months, I've been welcoming a guest once a month and tonight's guest is Allison Phillips. Alice and I met at the new school way back in the day, and we've worked together professionally a couple times, most notably the New York Chill Harmonic. Uh, but let me just read you a little bit about Allison for those of you who don't know what she does. Allison is a Brooklyn-based trumpet player, composer, and educator. Jazz Scene has called the Allison Phillips Trio an invigorating list on that probes, as Ornette Coleman did, the line between song and sonic exploration. The group released their first EP in 2017 and will be releasing their first album, Placement and Logging, in 2021. And we're doing quite a few tunes from that record that has not been released yet. Phillips also leads or co-leads the DeCant Phillips uh, Collective, a group which Hot House Magazine has called one of the most exciting emerging groups in New York. And the Allison Phillips Trio and the DeCant Phillips Collective have toured domestically throughout Europe and Canada, and I'm really happy to have her on, so we're gonna bring her out in just a second. Happy Tuesday, everybody.
Beautiful. Beautiful. It's been a lot of fun learning all this music and listening to this record that isn't out yet. Uh, I feel like very privileged to be able to hear it before it comes out. Um, anyway, there's, there's a lot that we can talk about. Sure. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. It's so nice to see other Lovely. people than I usually do. I know. It, it's, it's just so fun to be able to play with other people in this time. Uh, but let's, let's talk. So you are originally from New Jersey. Yes. Uh, Remind me again, South Orange, is South that what you Orange, said? South Orange, yeah. Cool. I, I know very little about New Jersey, but uh, so why, I, New York City seems kind of like an obvious uh, original move, right? For sure. Because it's, it's close to home, it's across the river. Yeah. I don't know if it really had to do with being close to home, but like, I guess I started doing, I started taking lessons, private lessons with Tatum Greenblatt. Oh, okay. When I was in middle school. Oh, wow. And so uh, he kind of got started getting me involved in like a bunch of like jazz pre-college programs around the area. Um, and then sort of through him, but also sort of through a friend of my mom's, I ended up uh, in the Jazz Standard Youth Orchestra. What is that? Which actually was a pretty cool program. Um, unfortunately, the Jazz Standard recently closed oh right um, i mean they're i think they're trying to find a new home yeah i hope so but that uh that program was really unique in the sense that you basically played a brunch set every sunday oh that's very standard, cool yeah, yeah but you were like you know 13 years old and didn't have any idea what you were doing so it right. really was amazing for just kind of like throwing you into the deep end um the first like sunday my my parents brought me down there they i think you know they also like didn't know what they were getting me into i think totally either um i didn't even know what a form was so it was like <laughs> well terrifying. yeah 13 yeah yeah that's I think just I, I feel like that's the age when you're just like struggling to keep up with the chord changes when you're trying to improvise it i didn't something. i mean that was like oh, a okay. whole right. other thing you know so um like i will confidently say that my first improvised solo was on stage at the jazz standard <laughs> that's amazing oh man r.i.p the jazz standard yeah. I, I think they're trying to find a new home i, I think so. i think that's the vibe so so then well so you probably made connections there yeah and i just sort of started getting like a little more involved also like the new yeah the north jersey all these guys like you know vic juris like right. he had a really uh, which you know rest in peace rest for in peace, sure uncle vic yeah yeah he was the biz. best absolutely the best um but you know he had he lived in West Orange and he had like uh, programs and there were lots of programs in Montclair and just like the whole area is very connected. Yeah, I think keep the mic like right next. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, folks. We're we're dealing with a mic so I can have reverb for her trumpet. <laughs> but then if I turn this off, it's really soft. It's it's a whole thing. But we're gonna get through this. Um, so you ended up going to the new school. Yes. You were a couple of years younger than me because you came in with my friend Coleman Nakano, also RIP. Yes. Uh, and a bunch of like, like really killing straight ahead kids. Like uh, I think Max Zoe was there, mm -hmm. Chloe Rollins, mm -hmm. uh, Matt Chalk. Yeah. And I just remember you guys came in and like my class was doing really weird things, and all of a sudden there's all these like really crazy like straight ahead jazz musicians, and it was kind of intimidating to be on the older <laughs> side of that. Like, what is this school trying to do to us? But um, no, your class was great. But then you decided to leave New York. Did you stay in New York after school for a period before going to Europe? No. Um, it was like, it was, I always tell people like, it was not like a well thought decision. It was very, <laughs> very spur of the moment. Um, while I was at new school, I was really fortunate to study with Lori Frank for a couple of years, who I don't know if you're familiar. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with. Lori Frank was like the trumpet guru um, basically for like 30 years in New York City, like literally every trumpet player and brass players as well um, took lessons with her. That's like, like anyone of note in the past 30 years has studied. Oh, very Frank cool. At some point. Very cool. Um, it is kind of funny how there's, there's teachers like that who aren't necessarily famous for playing, but totally just like teach everyone. She's someone who wasn't really known. She wasn't known really at all as an improviser, but a, a super strong section player. She played in the Maria Schneider. Oh, okay. Band for okay. Years. Yeah. And she was, uh, I think in the studio, you know, in like the big studio heydays of the 80s and 90s. Right, right, right. Uh, worked a lot. Um, but she was a teacher. Um, and she also, man, all these people passed away. She unfortunately passed away, I think, our junior year? Or my yeah. junior year at the okay. high school. Um, 
But one of the things she said to me was like, you know, you got to do your master's degree immediately. Otherwise, you're Never probably gonna not going to do it. Yeah. Totally, totally. Um, so that just sort of stuck with me. And um, then I started taking lessons with Ingrid Jensen. Very cool. Uh, uh, the, Ingrid, I, I've heard of, obviously. Yeah, uh, who has it? Yeah. Also. I heard at one point she was learning the trumpet left-handed just in case or something crazy. I know. Just for well, it sounded like she was just doing it for fun, just to challenge herself even more. Yeah, she had some like nerve thing. Oh, okay. That so. was actually like, but I don't know if that was really. But she does have a left-handed trumpet, and it's a Monet left-handed trumpet, which is a very fancy left-handed trumpet. <laughs> okay. If you're gonna have yeah. a left-handed trumpet. <laughs> Good. Um, cool. So then you take off immediately after new school, because when you left, I kind of felt like you were never coming back. I was just like, okay, Allison's off in Europe, because I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, so she knew she knew one of the teachers oh, in Amsterdam. Okay. So she was like she she was the one who sort of told me about the program and was like it's cool. Um yeah, I don't really know if I ever thought about it. I had a lot of um it, it was just sort of I went I really liked living there. I definitely needed a change. I think being living in New York City and being from 15 miles away from New York City and I kind of had this idea of what my career was going to look like going into college, going into my bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. that by the end of my bachelor's degree, I wasn't really sure if that was relevant or if it was even what I wanted anymore. Um, and so it was really great to move to Amsterdam and have... Also, I had so many connect, not connection, but you know, like I knew a lot of people right. in New York. I definitely had a major safety net in New York City, whereas, which I feel very grateful to have, but going to Amsterdam, I literally knew no one and I had to start from scratch. I couldn't rely on being called as a side man because no one knew who I was. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's actually, that actually scares me a lot. Um, I had my friend Halsey on the show as like the first guest uh -huh. and she recently moved here from Las Vegas, which is where I'm from. Right. And I think if I were to move back to Las Vegas, people would have no idea who I am. I'd have to start even like from my hometown. It would still be a little bit of like starting over from scratch. And that's what kind of scares me. Like I'm feeling like I'm comfortable here. I just kind of want to stick with it because it gets a little bit better every year, but totally, I... which is crazy. Cause like that's even like that thought of like moving back to Las Vegas or like moving to Los Angeles, but you moved to Europe. <laughs> to yeah. Amsterdam that it wasn't I think I definitely had a bit of like this arrogant idea of like oh people are gonna call me for stuff because I'm from New York oh yeah, yeah which yeah. actually I think in many ways it's the opposite is true they don't want to call you because they want to call the local the guys. local guys yeah um yeah. which that's that's something I can get into also uh, <laughs> I mean that's part of the reason I left but uh Ooh. uh the but yeah there's like it there's something to be said and honestly i didn't necessarily know if i was gonna leave i uh, holland you know i was there for five years and yeah, yeah it, it was, was a long time yeah exactly and it was you know it became my sort of second home and i, I miss it terribly but i'm also really happy to be back yeah so then what prompted the decision so you how long was your program in Amsterdam. It was two years. So then you just stayed three additional years yeah. just to, to, to gig and play and be in Europe. Mm -hmm. So nice. Mm -hmm. I'll get my passport one of these days. Yeah, <laughs> I've never I've never been overseas. Um, so then what prompted you to uh, move back to New York after um, being there for five years? I kind of felt like I had somewhat reached a bit of a, a cap onto what, um, what artistic... Uh, and career opportunities I was going to have there. Um, it's a small country, the Netherlands. Right. Amsterdam is under a million people. Right. So uh, significantly. I mean, eight times smaller than New York. Yeah. And it's also like, it's a country that used to, their art scene and their music scene used to subsist like mostly off of subsidies. Right. And a lot of those subsidies have been cut in like the past 10, 15 years. Oh, so there's just way less, even before the pandemic, right. there was just way less gigs to go around. For sure. And in the past, um, which of course made everything a little more competitive. Um, nope. And hmm, popular. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so it was just sort of like, and I honestly, I just missed New York and I missed the scene and I missed the type of opportunities you have here. I kind of came back and I was like, I'm ready to be like the sort of workhorse trumpet player that I don't think I necessarily was ready 
to be before, before I yeah, left. Yeah, for sure. Now, what would you put the differences in scenes? Because uh, I've always heard this thing where, like, uh, something about European audiences are more open to new music or interesting listening. I don't know if that's true or not. It is and it isn't. Um, Amsterdam is, and Holland in general, I think, is a very interesting complex. I'm probably going to, like, offend the I don't know if any Dutch people are listening to this, but it's fine. <laughs> what time is it over there? Um, yeah, it's, it's, the people are sleeping. They've yeah. got a curfew right now. So, uh, yeah, oh, they've got wow. an 8.30 p.m. curfew and are rioting in the streets about it, which wow. is another interesting thing. But, yeah. um, no, I'm Amsterdam as a city has a really rich history of, you know, I don't know if you know the Bim House, which, like, is one of the greatest jazz venues in the world for oh, okay. sure. Um, but, like, they have a big history with, you know, improvised music um, and the whole like improvised Amsterdam scene is very much a sound. Um, you, um, you know, you, like guys like Han Benick and like those kinds of, of drummers yeah. and stuff like that are very important. Um, they also have a really, really hardcore straight ahead scene. I, yeah, I because I feel like I've heard uh, you know Martin Seiler. Yeah. I think I think he's told me about some like uh, the pretty like really traditional gigs that happen in Germany all the time. Uh, for, <laughs> so I, I guess like we we don't really have that, do we? I mean, there there is like the the trad jazz community in town. Well, it's not but... necessarily trad jazz, but it's it's hard to explain. But for example, like Dick Oates does really well in Amsterdam. Oh, okay. Dick Oates is in Amsterdam multiple times a year. Dick Oates is great. But like, fabulous. Um, yeah. Uh, as does um, what's his name, a guitar player that I am blanking on the name of. But yeah, so it's like it's funny because on the one hand there is a bit more integration between like the super super straight ahead hard bop uh, or like new bop whatever you want to call it cats as they say, <laughs> um, and the free improvisers there. But then there's also a very it's it's also very much segregated. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also like the whitest jazz scene I've ever seen. Which, well, it is yeah, Europe, I guess. Yeah, but it's crazy because like Holland is a freaking diverse country. So the fact that it is as white 